What's up, y'all? This is DJ John Doe, Southern Vanguard Radio. I uh, hope everyone is healthy and safe and taking care of themselves. Um, you know, normally this is not the way the interview session starts off uh, every week, but uh, I wanted to provide a little background and context uh, around what's going on with the show and, you know, just a few tweaks and differences uh, that you might hear in this episode and, you know, the mix show that we dropped this week, episode 246. Um, you know, obviously, um, the entire world's, uh, in a extremely, uh, peculiar and precarious situation right now. But, uh, you know, we're going to push on regardless and, you know, continue to give that twice a week goodness, you know, that we always give you. Um, but, uh, you know, for, for this episode and, and, uh, for episode 246, um, this is the week where, uh, we had to bring Meeks in virtually. So, um, you know, Meeks is dialing in. Uh, via Skype from his home in the SWATs. Um, you know, I'm in the lab and here in Marietta and, um, you know, we're just, uh, we're trying to keep this thing going the best we can. Um, so as we kind of got into, um, you know, the interview with Sabak, um, you know, all, all the banter, you know, that you'd normally hear or that we normally have, I should say, before you have an interview session, you know, you guys as listeners don't get to, um, don't get to hear. And, um, you know, I just thought, you know, this is uh, a unique time. And, you know, I thought, let's just try, you know, some unique things. And um, what we decided to do in this interview session is to let you guys hear, um, you know, a sample of what goes on before we actually kick the interview off. Um, so, um, you know, as we kind of got to the end of the banner and we were getting ready to start the show, you know, Sabak and I were like, yeah, man, well, maybe we just, you know, need to let this fly. Right. Just let 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 all the good stuff roll because, you know, we there's a lot of fun that happens before the interview uh, that you guys don't get to hear. Um, and it's also kind of it gives you a I guess a, a window into, you know, why our interview sessions are unique, because we're, we try to have a ball from the moment we hit record and we get on the phone with whoever we're interviewing. So uh, Meeks and I kind of like to think that. You know, that's why folks get so comfortable with this. That's why, um, you know, we get good interviews and, you know, hopefully you, you're entertained by this. So, uh, anywho, enough of the rambling. Let's get to it. This is Southern Vanguard Radio interview sessions with Sabak Red of the Almighty Nonfiction. Let's get into it. Peace. Sabak. Joe, what's up? How are you, man? Yo, <laughs> Meek, how are you, man? What's up? Sabah, so how are you? How are you, brother? I made it where? Hold on, hold on, hold on one sec. <laughs> you good, Meek? You got a quiet place? Hold on, hold on, hold on. All right. Yep. <laughs> Sabah, you have to bear with us, man. This is the first. <laughs> 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 hey. <laughs> oh man. How are you, brother? I'm doing well. How are you, gentlemen? I'm good, man. We're not live. So John, the other guy there is Meeks. What up, Ray? <laughs> this is crazy. This is crazy. <laughs> which 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 part of it is crazy? <laughs> Talk to me. Uh, <laughs> I well, love it. <laughs> well, you you gotta you, you gotta Absolutely. remember, uh, Bach. I mean, me and this gentleman here are our best friends and go back over twenty years, and uh, right. we've seen each other every Sunday night for the past five years since we started this show. Yep. And uh, you know, this is just fucking weird. So that that's what I mean by this is weird. But uh, there's absolutely. all there's, there's all kinds of other sh weird shit going on too, obviously. So uh, absolutely, but it, it, it just even adds to the weirdness of it all, <laughs> right? Five years of Sunday night, it, it's ritualistic, right? Yeah, absolutely, it's a culture, right. and now all of a sudden you've interrupted the pattern. <laughs> Fuck, exactly. Yeah, man. Meeks, are you straight? Can you hear me? Okay. Yeah, I'm good, man. Okay. All right. You know what? Oh, um, I do wanna go, I do wanna try my um my headphones though. Give me one second. Okay. Yep. Thank That's you. what I did. I put it I put it in my earbuds. Yeah. Hopefully the battery will last. Yeah. So um J, how J, J57 is like, yeah, I'm not really uh not really <laughs> the uh 
um, how how would we say this? The virtual Zoolander of. <laughs> 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 yeah, I don't, I don't know. Recently, because we had a photo shoot. Yeah, right when we were starting to discuss the, uh, when we started to discuss, you know, the project, you know, just doing a joint or two, and I was like, "Yeah, man, gotta get your, gotta get your Zoolander on, man." <laughs> <laughs> he didn't want to do it. Yeah, no, he 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 did the photo shoot. I was just saying, you know, I gotta get gotta get that Zoolander flow. Oh right, yeah, absolutely. Get, get that model. Yeah, he he's got the face. He's got the face for it too. For sure, man. <laughs> <laughs> oh man! All right, so makes you plugging in headphones. Yeah, can you hear me? I, I yeah. can. Are I you said, getting Are you getting any background noise in here? I'm downstairs in the basement. And there's a laundry going right now. It's on spin cycle, which is terrible. But if you're picking it up, let me know and I'll stop it. No, no, you're good. Uh, I think cool. we're good. You straight me? Cool, cool. Yeah, y'all can hear me, okay? Yeah, you absolutely. You, yeah, you yeah. actually sound you actually sound great. Everybody sounds great, actually. That's what's that? All right, so um, so box. So the, so the deal is, um, I alluded to it a little bit in the um in the email, but basically in one night we record an interview and we record a mix show. So mm-hmm. um, so how this is going to go down is we're going to do the the interview first, obviously, and then like we'll play the joint. You're in Jay's new joint on a mix show and just promote throughout the week. And then the, the full interview drops on Thursday, basically. So, um, yes, yes. So Meeks and I usually kind of kick it off and talk a little shit and, you know, uh, toast one another, uh, cause we're, we're usually drinking and, um, and then we'll kind of bring it back over to you. So we're going to attempt this as we normally do, do a little intro yeah. and then we'll come back over to you. Let's do it. Should I get a drink as well and toast? Uh, if, 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 if you're a drinker and you'd like to, you can. All right. So, you know, well, since I, I, everybody's drinking, let me go to the kitchen right quick. <laughs> what, what, what do you got there? What do you got there? Some bourbon? Some yeah, bur- yeah, bur- yeah, we're bourbon drinkers here. I, I'm from Kentucky. Right I'm from Kentucky originally, and Meeks is from Tennessee, so we are whiskey drinkers. Ooh, I'm not mad at that. So, That's good. Yeah, man. What about you? I what like do you got a, there? Water? Uh, uh, I like, uh, lately I've been doing some tequila mockingbird. Oh, okay. All right. Right, like a little agave, trying to keep yep. the immune system strong. Right, so all right, that's right. That's what's up? Count right the tequila. <laughs> yes, man. <laughs> all right, beautiful. I do, I do have some friends out uh out here who uh in the Bay Area who um love some Japanese whiskey and some really oh yeah good okay bourbons and yeah you know so we definitely do some tastings now and then. So all yeah, right. man, dope. All right. So yeah, so I'll follow you, lead man. Just do okay. what you do, and um, all right. Ask away, and I'm chilling down right. here. Yeah, you don't have to worry about language either. It's a podcast, so say whatever the fuck you want, right? So we're good Fantastic. on that. All right. <laughs> Meeks, I, um, I wish it was a way we could record this. We can't record this this the, session right here. The video. The video. I, I I thought about that, but I didn't have enough time to get it together. So Man, maybe next this, time. <laughs> this is monumental right here. <laughs> it's crazy. All right, you got your drink ready, Meeks. You ready to go? I'm almost there. One second. All right. All right. Oh man. John, that glass looks fancy too. That looks like a really in, kind of engraved scripture uh, it, kind of Well, it, it's not that fancy. It's just the city of Atlanta on it. Okay, hold on. I hold the fuck up. Hold the fuck up. Yeah. I'll be right back. Okay. Give, give me give me 30 seconds. Okay, all seconds. right. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> this is classic. Hold on. Uh oh, he's got I his. Upstairs, so hopefully, hopefully, you guys can still hear me. But he's got Brooklyn hold, on that. He's got Brooklyn on, on that motherfucker. It, yeah. Hold on. Make a salute. <laughs> hold on. I'm all the way upstairs. Hold on. Yeah, you didn't realize who you were fucking with, Bach. Night. <laughs> we we're gonna, we're gonna make this monumental for sure. <laughs> Hold on. Uh, we might have to just let the beginning of this thing roll from jump. I mean, let I, it roll. Let yeah. it roll. I may not edit let this shit get, out at all. Let it, let it roll. Get bold. I just can't hold back. Focus on the man with soul with the total effects. What the heck? Rock this go deck. Oh. <laughs> 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 oh 
nothing better than a Big Daddy Kane, which I was I was about 14 years old when I promoted a Big Daddy Kane party in Brooklyn, New York, and I invited Q Unique from the Arsonist, and he was like, What are you doing promoting Big Daddy Kane? Oh anyway, shit. Damn, that's a story. We gotta get into that. Oh, there it is. Look. <laughs> Uh, there you go. Yeah, yeah right, man. We gotta get Neek, we gotta get Neeks one for Tennessee. Uh, <laughs> oh, that's that's about as that's about as that's as a great etch, looking glass. That's about that's as perfect. etch as I get, man. I'm drinking. I'm, I'm drinking Shiraz. I feel like a punk right now. <laughs> No, you're good. Like a Shiraz is good. Nice Australian Shiraz, you're good. Uh, this is South African, actually. There you go. Perfect. I hope it that's ain't that shit to do with better. apartheid. <laughs> no, I'm not either. Oh, man. All right. Salud. Cheers. Salud, Salud fellas. Cheers, gentlemen. Yes, sir. Y'all stay safe, man. Stay healthy, man, to your health. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. All right. Absolutely. All right, let's do it. Y'all good? Yeah. Ready. All right. Southern Vanguard Radio, this is DJ John Doe, and to the right of me in that their computer is my man. <laughs> Cappuccino <laughs> Mix! <laughs> Cappuccino <laughs> Homie, what's going on, man? Oh, <laughs> uh, God, this is some weird old shit right now, my man. Uh, I'm so bugging out right now. <clears throat> So uh, for those of you that, uh, you know, I don't know where you would have been if you didn't know what the fuck was going on in the world right now. But, um, you know, I was just telling our interviewee for this evening, we're going to chat with him in a second. But I was just telling him that every Sunday night, more or less, for the past five years, me and Meeks have been in the lab doing these interview sessions and doing these mix shows. And uh, we can't tonight because of, uh, you know, there's a worldwide pandemic right now with uh, COVID nineteen coronavirus, and um, you know we're we're uh, we're doing this virtually for the first time ever. So, first you know, Meeks, thank you for making this happen, man. We've we'll, we'll give this a whirl and see how it goes. No doubt. Uh, I was just <laughs> informed that I forfeited the Scrabble game I was playing <laughs> oh. um, just a minute ago. I uh, I lost, and I. Uh, I'm going to have to pay up after I get done with this. So thanks a lot, guys. <laughs> You're welcome. I appreciate You're welcome. it. So Meek, Meek, how is it in the swatch right now, man? What's going on? You've been, uh, you've been kind of out and about. You have not been social distancing. I have per se. I mean, I'm, I, I worked all week. Um, my building my building is closed. Uh, everybody is working from home, but I am a operations manager, facilities manager. So I really don't have that luxury. Um, I still got vendors coming into the building. I still got, uh, deliveries. I'm still doing mail. Once I get the mail, I scan it and email it to people right. to keep the, keep the business going. I, I, I work at a law firm basically. So, yeah. um, you know, people still got to, got to get their business taken care of and stuff like that. So yeah, it's, uh, I mean, but there's nobody in the office, so there's distance there, but to be honest with you, man, and, and the way my mindset is like, I don't know. I don't know anybody that's got so much as a cold right now. So Mm -hmm. I don't want to, I don't want to cheapen it for anybody, but I'm just, I just am who I am. I know where I live. You know what I'm saying? I know what this, this country was built upon. Uh, I, I know, I know what the fear factor is when I see it. So it's just like, I'm cool on all of it. I'm, I'm staying safe. I, I, I have full belief in my immune system. Um, I, I, I believe in my immune system so much that even if I was to get this shit, I beat it. So I'm cool on that. And I'm not worried about it. Um, I just, uh, worry about my, my, my kids and my family and no doubt. even your family, homie, um, Absolutely. you know, just, you know, just, just trying to be safe with it. But, uh, but you know, that's one way to, I don't know, keep your mind off of it, man. I just keep it moving, man. Yeah. I keep it moving. I, I got to get up and go to work in the morning. It's, it's just another day for me. You know yep. what I mean? So, all right. That's what it is. That's all you can do. I, 
Yeah, you don't look batshit crazy over there with all the kids you got and everything. You look pretty sane right now, huh? Well, you know how happy I am right now to be in the lab with y'all? Shit, man. I mean, that bat, it's good shit. That bad shit, cra- sure. that, that shit crazy left me as soon as I stepped in this room and got on the phone with y'all. Right. So, you know, we're good now. <laughs> <laughs> but, I mean, yeah, to your point, I mean, uh, and actually to our listeners real quick, you know, I apologize. Um you know, normally we're on that twice a week shit every week. Two weeks ago, Meeks was out of town. He had to go back to Memphis, uh, you know, to see his family. So we took a break. And then last week when all this shit, you know, broke, uh, man, me and the wife had to, you know, pivot and figure out how we were going to homeschool four kids and, you know, what we, right. were, what we were doing with work and all that shit. So last week we just had to, we had to take another break and just, you know, get reorganized. So anyway... Right. Uh, it looks like this shit's going to work out. So it looks like we're back in effect. And uh, like I said earlier, I yeah. just wish we could could record this actual footage. That would be awesome. Yeah. Well, maybe, maybe that that's next awesome. week. Maybe that's next. We'll week. figure that out for we'll, next week. We'll see. We'll see. Yeah. All right. Cool. So without any further ado, before we get down to business, if this is the first time you're listening to Southern Vanguard Radio, because may, maybe you're a fan of this gentleman that we're get, getting ready to chat with, or maybe you just stumbled across us somewhere on the World Wide Webs. This is Southern Vanguard Radio. We drop twice a week on Tuesdays. It's a mix show. All the latest and greatest hip hop, cut up, scratched up, scratched up, mixed the way it should be by myself, me and my homie Meeks. Just talking the awfulest amount of shit and drinking good bourbon and good beer all night. And then on Thursdays, we have an interview session. So it could be an MC or DJ or A&R or uh, some creative photographer, artist that's, uh, you know, within this, uh, this, this uh, culture that we love so much called hip hop. So make sure that you subscribe on virtually any platform that's worth a damn. Apple Podcasts, Mixcloud, SoundCloud, Stitcher Radio, Google Podcasts, Spotify Podcasts, YouTube, and Mix we have some affiliates as well that uh help spread the word, right? We do, and I hope they are safe as well. Uh ATLHipHop.com, I am classic raw radio dot net, return of the boom bab WRBB. X Squad Radio, X Squad Affiliates, and then we go out to the West Coast with Soul Public Radio out west. Cali. All right, beautiful. All right, yeah. so let's get down to it, y'all. This gentleman here, well, first, big shout to the homie J57, fan of Southern Vanguard Radio. Uh, you know, the JMO gang shit's getting ready to drop, so get ready for that. Um, he just dropped a single with this gentleman that we're going to talk about. But, but real quick, before we turn on his mic, I want to tell a, a quick story about how I first got introduced to this gentleman's music and his group's music. So, uh, if you don't know, I'm from a little shit town in Kentucky called Glasgow. They're in jack shit there, right? So, uh, when I went, went, you know, coming up DJing, trying to find records, you know, I had to go to Louisville, Kentucky, go to Nashville, Kentucky, go to Cincinnati, go to St. Louis, go to Indianapolis, go to Chicago, wherever the fuck I could to get my records, right? Or what did you do back in the day? You called up New York, and I called, you know, Upstairs Records, or I called Rock and Soul, and they play you joints over the phone and be like, all right, you know, you know, get together a package and send it to me to get all the new hot shit. So when Fat Beats first opened up, um, you know, I started calling Fat Beats, and one day I called up there, and I got DJ Eclipse on the phone. He would never remember this story because he's got a trillion stories like this. So, you know, so we're 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 going through all the records, like the new Nas record that just dropped and this rest. You know, I I can imagine the clips just like going through the list of like, you know, okay, all the out of towners. Here's all the new shit that they want. And then he's like, have you heard this new group called Nonfiction? And I'm like, no, I haven't. What's up with that? He's like, yeah. He's like, it just dropped. It's real dope. Uh, MC Search is involved with it. He's like, "Let let me play it for you real quick. So he played it over the phone. I was like, damn, that shit sounds dope. Yeah, put that in the box. So, you know. Lo and behold, that I find out that uh, Eclipse is actually a member of this group. <laughs> so, so Eclipse was, was, you know, hocking his own shit to me over the, uh, you know, over, over the phone. Uh, you know, when I called up the Fat Beats, but uh, I, I say that's a great story, and I love that story because that was kind of the start of the New York indie boom in the mid '90s. And uh, that 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 twelve inch, uh, I believe, it was Five Burrows, along with the, a cavalcade of other, you know, twelve inches from that time, kind of just. Um, you know, really shaped my, uh, I don't know, my hip hop palette, you know, uh, you know, in, the, in that time period. So now that that long ass story's over with, without any further ado, ladies and gentlemen, Sabak Red. 
from what nonfiction. Hey, yo, what's happening, man? Salute. Salute. Salute, gentlemen. Absolutely. Take a toast. Yes, sir. No doubt. I'm glad I'm glad we're on here during these interesting uh evolving times, to say the least. And uh I'm glad, glad to uh see y'all virtually healthy and grinding and keeping this uh keeping this moving. Absolutely. No doubt. I so, would be there, but uh I don't want to get into it with the homie's wife, man. <laughs> she's uh she's not to be fucked with, man. So no, I, no. I I I I stay my ass at the house. Keep your distance, right? Keep yeah, six man, feet away. Yep. Yeah, I don't I don't want those kind of pride. I don't want none of that smoke, man. Shouts out no. to Matt. I hear that. I hear that. <laughs> yep. Well, so, it's interesting the fact that we have this technology, uh, you know, using Skype or or Zoom or many of the other um apps that are available now for people to be able to do this in the first place, right? Man, so, I'm gonna lie, I ain't gonna lie to you, you cannot front on this right here. Like it's it's going down. Like yep, yep. I'm, I'm happy to be here, man. Hey, Bob, I see you. Uh, you reside in Oakland right now. Is that true? Yeah, I live in the it's, Bay Area. I moved, I moved out here in 2005. Okay, is a, is this is it the whole state of California that's on 24 hour, or was it just Los Angeles? Oh wow, the whole, okay. the whole state. We actually, I think that we, uh, in the Bay Area, specifically San Francisco, Oakland, Alameda. A lot of places actually were one of the first to be sheltered in place. This is day 10 for us right now. Oh, um, no. Yeah. And shelter in place is really like, you know, you can go outside for essential needs, right? You can go outside and take a walk, but they ask that you keep your like at least six feet distance, which we, cool. I know growing up in New York City and in Brooklyn, especially, it's like, it's hard to keep distance, especially That's if you impossible. Live, yeah. you know, in the bricks. It's like, you know, how yeah. is that going to happen? You know, fortunately out here, we have a little bit of, of space between each other. You know, i got the kids, uh-huh. i got two kids, a nine-year-old um, and a five-year-old and my wife. And we jumped in the car today and we took a ride down towards the beach area and yeah. found an open space through the ball around a little bit like that. People seem to nice. be staying optimistic, but schools are shut down. You know, we've got yeah. enough food and yeah. Yeah. Same crazy thing, to think about man. the type of shit nonfiction was talking about back in the late nineties and early two uh, thousand. Dude, and dude. Like, so, so when I saw this, <laughs> in, when I saw the reminder come up for this interview, I was like, "How in the fuck am I getting ready to interview Sabak Rare yeah. for nonfiction?" I feel like I'm in a goddamn nonfiction song right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, exactly. You know, and, it, and it's funny because it's like, you know, um, I was talking. To, I started a little group chat with me, Bill Eclipse, and Gore-Tex and uh, Lord Goat. Recently, we just started going back and forth yes, in terms of like, this feels like, you know, this feels like the uh, reality when when uh, life imitates art and art imitates life, you know. Um, and again, we were talking about in a way which, you know, whether it's you call it your third eye or whether you call it, you know, reading up on some conspiracy theories or whatever it is. But, you know, you know, the music, you know, we've been talking about stuff like this for quite some time. And I don't think as much as you can talk about it, you can ever really be prepared for something like this magnitude. Um, mm-hmm. at this point but you know there's definitely some some uh mind growth mindset i should say that's that's coming along with all of this right now no doubt Bach, what what were you, what were you thinking when you first started to see this thing pop up like when did you first start to take note of yeah yeah interestingly enough i i i was at baseball practice with my son right i, I helped coach this little league team when i went at the time and um there was a dad on the team who I'm friends with, and he was getting intel and information from his brother. It's probably about a month ago. He was like, yo, there's this, this thing going down, you know? I was like, okay, let's continue to watch it, and let's be mindful, right? I'm be slightly germophobic OCD anyway, right? But I started okay. just preparing, and that's like getting some things around the house prepared, et cetera, et cetera. And I was like, this is serious right now. Also started thinking about the elections that are coming up, right? Because it was right yeah. around the time where Tuesday elections were coming up and we had to go to the polls and vote. And I was like, this is really interesting to me. And again, I don't want to delve too much into what some may consider to be conspiracy, whatever it is. But I definitely felt something. But I also know how real um, science is and how real spiritual beings out of forces of nature are as well, right? Um, and again. The preparation in advance was really was really necessary, and I think that will continue to be necessary in terms of how we react towards all of this. But my mindset was like, "Fuck, this is going down!" Like stuff we were talking about 
conversations when we were whether we were smoking L's on the block or whatever, <laughs> like this is mm-hmm. happening, you know, this yeah. is going down, whether it was martial law as a state of controlling people in a population that were under-resourced or marginalized, or whether it was due to a virus like the plague, which we recorded mm-hmm. for the Secret Society album. Bill just released a snippet of it on his Instagram page recently. We, we did a song for the plague, or the song I have on the ritual called What You're Gonna Do When the Lights Go Out, which features me and Ill Bill. And we talked about this, but it's happening in some way, shape, or form right now. And I think that, um, I think it's serious. I think we need to take heed. I think we need to at least be advised and we need to be aware. Um, Mm. But fear is a form of, fear is terrorism, right? Mm -hmm. I think this is a a, a wild form of some kind of uh, uh, terrorism, maybe with not a intent to be terrorism, right? Because it's fear. Fear-based, right. the media is definitely projecting that. So I choose because I need to be here for my family. I need mm-hmm. to be sane. I choose to stay informed, but I choose not to be overwhelmed by all right. of the information that's coming in from various media sources, right? Got it's it. like, yeah. Anyway. Bob, we talk about y'all being on this on this wave way back when. Let's let's look at the contrast of it. Like we're we're in it now. But um, like you said, going back to back in the day when y'all were recording this music and everything, whether it was a was a, whether it was L infested or, or whatever it was, right? What was what what had you guys on that back then? Mm-hmm. Was it just a sign of the times? Was it mm-hmm. uh, was it your 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 group's way of sticking out? What what was it for you guys back then? Yeah, great question. I think it was a combination of looking deep into various scriptures, a combination mm-hmm. of the kind of uh, hydroponic dirt weed that might have been smoked at the time in the studio. <laughs> um, I think it was a combination of us, uh, again, just the authentic conversations that we would have in Carnarsie, Brooklyn, and Area 51 about, like, look at what's happening around the world, and that whether it was reading Behold the Pale Horse or the ISIS papers or, you know, various books that we were reading to have these conversations about what if this were to happen, right? And I think coming at it for me with a social justice lens as well is thinking about, well, if this happens, what would be the solution or how do we navigate or overcome some of this? So for us, I think the initial point was the awareness, right? I think mm-hmm. back to some of the content in terms of what we what we were creating or even in terms of some of the stuff that I create was a lot of awareness. And I think maybe looking more into, in hindsight, how could we have been more even, or I could have been more solution-based. Like if this stuff is happening, mm-hmm. how can you be more preventative, right. right? And I think that's where we're at now and we're in it at this point right Mm, so yeah yeah, so um but i don't know i think it was a combination of a a number of things right Mm. uh from books that we were reading to conversations we were having to to uh things that we were exposed to feelings they really this innate feeling which is what really what brought us together synergy is real yeah Mm. and primarily it was a sign of the times because it was I, i asked you that question because um um that was that was a, a, a era of hip hop that, you know, is kind of forgotten these days. Um, mm-hmm. The uh, what do you want to call it? Um, the uh, mm-hmm. I, I don't want to say golden era. It was just a time where uh, it, things were totally different. Um, right. Rap was. Uh, you you went to you went to hip hop for information during that Correct. time. Um, it's, it's not, you know, it, it, I, I could definitely say it was more balanced back then, but mm. I think about me during that time um, and the way I was, I was putting rhymes together and stuff like that. I wasn't real preachy and beat you in the head with information and stuff like that, but I touched right. on certain things and I would jump in, jump out, you know, kind of, keep it well mm-hmm. rounded but there was a time where you went to hip hop for information Karis ones the, mm-hmm. the 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 poor righteous teachers uh brand right. new yeah. um, right. public enemy Lockham Shabazz like Lockham Shabazz things like Next that so, yeah all of that absolutely, you know absolutely so, and then um, you could also listen to like I I remember vividly like dancing to like and literally like I grew up as a b-boy as mm-hmm. a dancer 
whack graffiti artist, right? Um, <laughs> MC, et cetera. But I just remember being in a club like, Van Glorious, this is protected. Oh, no yeah. doubt. Right? To, I, to, so like, you know, to explant and then dancing to Nice and Smooth, right? Yeah, so yeah. You Same want to knock a jazz record and a Big Daddy right. Kane record and then mixing it in with like, you know, a Redhead Kingpin song, you know? That's right. Like that, that, was, that was the era and it was an opportunity to be well-rounded, right? Developing yeah. the whole being and the consciousness of yeah. one who was into hip hop at that time. And I think what was really unique about the era that we came in is some people would call it maybe independent or underground or backpack. But I think it was a really amazing balance um, with lyrics, with beats, call it boom bap or call it what you want. Oh, yeah, um, yeah. And content, right? You had a lot of different content, like thinking about even that Fat Beats era, John, that you spoke about mm -hmm. earlier on, you know, mm -hmm. you had records that were coming out with nonfiction, with the arsonist, right? With um, co-flow, you, know, you think of yeah. co-flow, right? Company yeah. flow. You think yeah. about uh, all those records that were being distributed at a time when it was like, whoa, this is absolutely amazing. And you got variations of what hip hop is um, at that time. Um, mm -hmm. so, and, and, and what the key point was then is content and lyrics, right? Mm -hmm. And if you had someone on the beats and a DJ, I mean, it was, it was absolutely amazing. It oh, was yeah, it's a rap. And it was yeah. it's great to see folks, man. I mean, Jedi mind tricks, right? Like yeah. Bill Bill and Vinny Paz and, you know, and, and, and LP, you know, and, and folks and Necro and folks who were still doing it till this day. Like right. regularly and continuously, it's amazing. And even how I met J fifty seven, right, to lead us up to to where we are even right now to be able to do this last joint. I remember when he was, you know, coming to Fat Beats and shopping at the stores, and then doing some solo stuff before the Brown Bag All Stars. And yeah. you know, yeah, it was just it's just amazing to think about that time and that culture and that era. But I, I do say this: I know some young folks in the high schools here, right? Because aside from doing music. Uh, you know, I'm a program manager doing expanded learning programs here. So I get to partner with like 12 different schools oh. in the Bay Area. My organization oh. that I work with works with 109 different schools like mm. to manage these great grants that are coming in to provide opportunities for students, primarily in high school, continuation high schools. Oh. And um, and I think about it and I'm starting to see like kind of this rejuvenation and re-energy of folks reaching back and looking into Yes. The vinyl looking into that era of yeah. independent fat beats, you know, um, underground, if you will, looking into that right now because it becomes the cool stuff. And I think whether it's through Griselda, right, when you think about mm -hmm. what that camp is doing, whether it's yeah. through like, you know, what Vinnie Paz and Jedi Mind Tricks and, you know, Ill Bill and Lord Go and and uh, and everyone's still doing. It's like people are trying to find that because it's 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 cool again. Right. Okay. Mm -hmm. Coming back, you know, it's back. So anyway, yeah, and I was going to ask, do you think a situation like what we're in now, what we're dealing with now would would probably spark a resurgence of information based hip hop? Knowledge say, based hip hop. Yeah, I, I would say that um, spark. I don't I wouldn't say necessarily spark me. I would say um, I would say maybe fan the fire. Right. Because I don't fire. think it's ever it's ever gone away. I think right. it's always been there. I think folks will start reaching for it now as a way for maybe some more intel or information and to Agreed. be enlightened. Yeah. 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 Okay. So, so uh, Bach, you're, you're probably, what, tw uh, almost 20 years, uh, 20 years removed from the, from the, well, wait, when, when did the first nonfiction 12-inch drop? That was 90. Wow, 98. The first 12-inch we ever dropped, and if you want to, some some crazy, it was it was legacy with no tomorrow. I'm sorry, I'm legacy and not tomorrow. What did what did I say? Five boroughs. What did I say? You said five boroughs. Okay, but legacy yeah. and no. So here's a funny story. Legacy and no tomorrow, right? Was produced by uh, C Style from Total Pack, and no tomorrow was produced by Necro. Yep. Right. And if you have the vinyl, and and Meeks and and John, if you have the vinyl of that 12 inch, if you hold it up to the light. You will see engraved in the vinyl on the insert right before, right after the sticker, it says nonfiction, David Blaine, 2001, the Goonish Millennium. What? We recorded and produced that lacquer 
right? We did, we created that lacquer in 1998. What happened was we were hanging out with, you know, we're obviously with MC Search, who was in the group. Yeah. And this guy named Johnny Podell, whose son is Cassidy Podell. DJ Cassidy is a well renowned world not DJ right now. He's yeah. killing it, right? Yeah. He was like 12, 13 and was a nonfiction fan. So Johnny Podell was friends with Search and would bring DJ Cassidy around. Johnny Podell was also starting to like promote and work with David Blaine, a young, unfamiliar mag- magician at that time. He brought David Blaine to the mastering session we had for <laughs> Legacy and No Tomorrow. <laughs> David Blaine, yo, y'all getting some exclusive shit right here. <laughs> Yeah, David he's Blaine, doing magic tricks and shit. Bro, <laughs> David Blaine starts pulling out these card tricks and starts doing crazy what? shit and levitating in the studio. What? And we're like, yo, man. We're like, yo, you're wild, bro. Like, this is wild. <laughs> Hold so we on. Said, yo, we're going to put your name in the lacquer. Oh, so wow. if you, every single vinyl that was produced because it was the, um, in the initial imprint, if you hold it up, you will read. 2001, nonfiction, the Goonish Millennium, David Blaine. In the run out, right? Wow. In the run out of the run out. Right. right on the right. run out. So this right is when the, that needle hits the end. So this is this wow. is the joint that had the, the, the 12 inch had the blue sticker on it, right? The first Correct. 12, right, exactly. That's that's the one I got. It wasn't five boroughs. Thank you for correcting me. Pull yeah, that I, out, pause, got that. and look at it. <laughs> <laughs> Slant it and pull it out. Put, put it to the light, bro. Anyway, wow. but that's, that's I don't know. That's a scary story. story. That, that record might start levitating or some shit. I don't know. I don't know if I want to look at it. <laughs> this motherfucker was levitating in the... In oh, the, shit. What's behind yo. you, John? Nah, <laughs> we, were like, we were like, yo. We were like, this is crazy. That's crazy as yeah. hell, man. But anyway, yeah, that was back. Uh, but that was back uh, in 1998, 99, because you had initially asked about when we first. Yeah, so I mean, over 20. Yes. So I think she will celebrate 25 years. Oh god, uh, that's crazy! This year, this year, 25 years. That's crazy. Crazy. So I mean, you know, you, you're you're obviously older now. You know, Bach. You have a family. You know, how do you think you would have reacted back then to what's going on now? Um, interesting. That's, that's a good point. Uh, you know, it, it, it depends. Cause I was a young, also very rebellious and like whatever. So, mm-hmm. you know, probably like Meeks just getting up, going to work, doing my thing. Right. Not, yeah. you know, feeling pretty confident, you know, now I'm like, oh, I don't know, but, you know, et cetera, et cetera. I don't know. Yeah. You know, not to put that out there because I, you, I find courage in what you had said earlier. That's, that's my point of saying what I said, you know, gotcha. um, I don't know. I, it's interesting. I don't know. I, I also probably would have cautioned on the side of, um, on the side of, uh, ooh, what's this really about? Yeah. Right. Right? Like yeah. Maybe digging in that time. Like, yeah, I don't know if I a hundred percent, you know, believe what's going on, but the tech, the death toll is not lying. Right. I mean, there's, there were 800. I chose to kind of remove myself a little bit more today on a weekend as I have to delve in more tomorrow on a Monday. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But when I did wake up and look at some of the, the news, I, I, I uh, there was 800 in one day in Italy. Yeah. I right? saw that too. And yeah. that's like, that's, a, that's, a, that's wild. You know, yeah, Italy is um, really catching it right now. They're um, catching it. They're catching it. You know, um, we in Georgia, the, the cases are, you know, growing and growing and it's just like wow you really gotta really gotta be checking for this shit it's uh right. it's amazing right. man it's amazing yeah. but don't get me wrong you know as soon as they do the 24 hour thing here you know i'm i'm done with that i can't yeah. i can't really uh you know right now like i said it's 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 kind of quiet it's yep I don't feel the pressure of what's going on right now, but right. you know, the moment they implement something crazy like yep. a twenty four hour lockdown, yep. I mean yep. I, I'm I mean I, I won't have a choice at that point. Exactly. And I and I would actually encourage you, and this is just a suggestion that and I'm sure you're already doing this, that I think even the power of anticipation is real, right? Mm-hmm. So even before they do that whole lockdown, continuously like take good care, right? Like make oh, sure when you come home, remove the clothes, you know, wash up, blah, 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 blah. Probably already doing that now because yeah, that's what okay. got us into this in the first place with our, with our, uh, you know, what, you know, 
our leadership right now, for lack of a better term, right? With our, with let me, our let wonderful, me throw that up. Let me throw that up <laughs> when you put the L word on that. Exactly. <laughs> um, I, I have a bunch of other words, right? But this guy, yeah. you know, he, the intel that he had, you know, last year. And oh, it's starting really to come out now. It. Yeah. Oh, exactly. Yeah. And the people know about that. People are still yeah. informed, you know? So, yeah. Yeah. They dropped the ball, man. It is what it is. And all the stuff that we're doing now, um, something that I've I've come to grips with myself is yeah. it's too late. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, you can lock down, you can do all this, but if they had taken heed early yeah. on, we wouldn't yeah. we probably wouldn't even be nowhere near yeah. this, man. Yeah. But it's interesting because I you know, I was reading something the other day and I was thinking about it as well. And then someone wrote something about it. It's, it resonated with me is the fact that we have to protect our old folks because they hold the knowledge and the history. They hold the okay. stories, you know, they hold testimonies and things that we have so much to learn from and, and the values that we need to continue to instill in our young people that I instill in my children is they need to act their grandparents' stories. You know, my mom no longer around. My pops is in Puerto Rico, so I don't really yeah. speak to him. I never really knew him like that. But my wife's mom and dad, you know, they're in their 70s and they're staying put, you know, and they live three hours away. But my children continuously ask them questions about, you know, how was it for my mm-hmm. for his grandmother growing up in Chicago, right? As a Mexican American in Chicago and from oh, his man. granddad, who's from Medellin, Colombia, who has 16 siblings and asking those kids so much information. So we right. gotta keep them healthy. We gotta keep our old folks healthy and alive. Man, man. All, I all wanna get that I wanna get their phone number, Bob. I exactly, exactly. Right. And to think about like, you know, folks who aren't taking this seriously, even though there's some shelter in place, like you gotta get it together. Yeah. Yeah. So for sure, but I'm man. staying positive and optimistic because there's flip side yeah, of it. It's like they said that, you know, the Venice Canals right now in Venice, Italy, you can actually see fish on the bottom of the water. No, I saw there that. aren't any, any boats running across. You know, right? that's what's so dope about it. It's uh it's it's uh I think the most positive way to look at this right now is a reset. And and right. and and not only for us, I think more importantly, the planet needed this type of reset right now. Hundred percent, hundred percent. You imagine what the, what the air quality is like right now, and you know, uh-huh. I mean, Absolutely. it's just a lot of positivity, and um, not a, not as much as all the negative stuff that's being put out there and everything right now. But <laughs> if you could just flip it and look at the positive aspects of it. I, I feel like in the end, it, it'll be okay, man. We'll be good. Absolutely. And I just really am, am pushing for the relief for all of my friends who are artists, right? Tattoo artists, barbers, people who are working in the restaurant industry, et cetera, et cetera, who are literally losing their jobs, being laid off right now and need to be yeah. taken care of. Because I think that this is the beginning right now, but there's going to be a lot of trials and tribulations to overcome in the immediate future, right? Not to mention the amount of mental health that's going to need to be provided. So, you know, like shout out to my wife who, you know, is a counselor, mental health provider. So the thing at a middle school, right? So thinking about the amount of students that are going to need that, not only from the disconnect of human interaction, right? Connection, but also for the amount of technology that's going to be used because you know, we're here on Skype right now and it's great and I love it. Um, it's a great opportunity for us to connect in these times, but there's also lots of after effects to being in front of a screen that many times, which is, you know, the other song that J57 produced called, you know, Television, which I talk about mm-hmm. the impact and the effects of being in front of the screens and the subliminal messages and binary codes that pop up. So I really worry about our young people who are spending enormous amount of hours and will continue to for virtual yeah. learning in the next couple of months. Yes, definitely. So, so that's a great segue, Bach. Let's talk about the new single. Uh, let's talk about some music, yeah. maybe. <laughs> yeah, man, let's do it. Let's do it. I, I was going to suggest that we we yeah. good. Now. <laughs> yeah, we good. No, we, we, we got that. Got that out of the way. All right. So, so new singles out now. Block cheese and bocce. Uh, man, who better than you know to tell us about it than you? So let's let's get into it. Uh, let's sure. let's can we talk about this title? Cause that shit <laughs> <Yeah>. is gangster. <laughs> I Thanks, love the man. title. I love the title. <laughs> I'm Thanks, trying man. to I'm trying oh, to wrap yeah. my head around that. That's that's some that's some Italian uh stuff in there jumping off right there, right? Hundred percent. So here, 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 
<laughs> Absolutely. So here's here's what it is, Meeks and John. So and 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 folks who are listening. So we not fiction. We toured Europe. We did about five six dates back in September of 2019, and. The first couple of shows we did, and it was really interesting to go to these venues. And I didn't have the expectation of, you know, nonfiction, periodically, we'll go out, we'll do some dates. Yo, the shows were packed, like sold out shows. It was incredible. And after the shows, you know, because Bill has been extremely active putting out music after music. Sure. Gore-Tex, Lord Goat has been putting out music, yep. you know, through Heavy Metal Kings and with Bill. I've been kind of silent, right? I'm not as active. I got other stuff going on. But the amount of fans that were coming up to me showing genuine love and asking me for Sabak, for Sabak, for Sabak. I remember going back to the hotel one night and, uh, you know, counting up some merch, with uh, Eclipse counting up merch and getting some pizza. And I was talking to Eclipse in the, in the hotel. And uh, I was like, yeah, I got this idea. I said, you know, J57, you know, he, he and I share a birthday. I thought at that time his birthday was the same as mine, February 7th. This is February 6th. I was like, I'm just going to holler at him. Because folks are asking for more music, and I really like what he's been producing lately. I'm going to holler. And Clips was like, that's a dope idea. I said, maybe we'll do like a, a limited edition, like, uh, you know, vinyl 7-inch, right? And we'll call it 2-7, two, two right? Because uh. uh, I thought our birthday was wrong. So we'll put two songs, right, on a 7-inch single. Ah. seven minutes long this whole thing and oh, this, yeah. you know after the show after the show we're chilling right? and anyway when i got back he just clips was like this is a dope idea so we got back from tour etc and i hollered at jay and jay hollered back and we started talking back and forth and he sent some beats and i'm such a picky motherfucker even nowadays I, you know why am i so picky i don't know i'm still picky but he sent some <laughs> beats and a lot of them were fire but i was really looking for that one interestingly enough this beat was like Dum, 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 dum. just like pretty basic right but something about it touched my strings mm-hmm. and i just started i started writing immediately i just started like freestyle and writing and the first line that came up was just like oh, from block cheese and boot camps bocce and food stand that just came out and i wrote it oh, and it shit. was because <laughs> because it's, it was the authentic <laughs> truth and the story behind that is I am a Puerto Rican Sicilian who grew up in Graves and Brooklyn in a predominantly Italian neighborhood on public assistance, right? My pops was in Puerto Rico. My mom's got divorced. The whole nine, I have a twin sister. So I remember getting block cheese and my mom trying to slice the cheese really thin and making grilled cheese sandwiches so that I didn't have to be exposed that we were collecting coupons. Right? The, cuts, the cuts on that cheese was always <laughs> that thick. You cannot. <laughs> thick. Thick as a bread slice. You know what? If you made a grilled cheese, that was the best. That's the best, as the best grilled cheese. Right? But I, remember, and, but I also remember like sometimes making those sandwiches and running down to the local schoolyard. There'd be these old guys playing bocce ball and I'd be sitting there eating <laughs> Eating it, <laughs> and, so, and, and and I won't lie, that was just a line. That was a bar, right? Yeah, was, yeah. And then when it was time to come up with a title, I could, I was like, do I call it like my third eye? Eh, too obvious. Do I call it twenty twenty? Eh, it's too obvious. And 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 truth be told, the chorus when I'm like my third eye's twenty twenty, we're now in twenty twenty. My son, who's nine, comes up to me and says. He heard me singing. It was like, Dad, what if this song is still around in 2021, 22? You're saying we're in 2020. Yeah. That's kind outdated. of like limiting. Yeah. And as an MC, as an artist, I should know that already. Yeah, exactly. Damn. So I changed it to we're in the 2020. So at least it lasts for some years, right? Yeah. So I did that. And then I started singing it. He started singing it with me. Hence, he was he, like, can I do, get on the track, Lou? Come on, Lucas, get on the track. Let's so anyway, but that's how the title came because that's my truth. I, I'm Puerto Rican Sicilian who grew up on public system with block cheese and would watch old Italian guys playing bocce ball down at Seplo Park in Brooklyn, you know, just who et cetera. It. Yes, but I said too, I said, uh, I'm from block cheese and boot camps, bocce and food stamps, but the routine got old. So I choreographed a new dance, mm. you know, and shout out to my mom who raised us because realities, it got old after a while. So now we got to get busy. We got to grind, get back to yeah. work. 
you know, my mom's went back to work after many, many years and did her thing and worked at uh, Beth Israel and NYU Hospital doing accounts receivable and made a, made a great life for us as, as young people. That's oh, dope, yeah. man. That's a great story. That's a great story. Um, so are you and Jay uh, continuing to work on some more things, Bach, or is there more coming, hopefully? That's the goal, man. You know, it, it, it's interesting because, and I, and I won't go too too much of detail, but I had reached out to Jay, and Jay and I, man, you know, it, it, it's like, you know, we go back to the point when Jay hollered at had me to do a song back in the day. And, and I, I think I was the first, like, quote unquote reputable artist to ever do a song with Jay. Oh, really? I going okay. To Long Island and recording, right? Dope. We did a song back in the days. I, I don't remember exactly what year it was. And then, and so we just became cool because I like Jay. He was, he's a good guy. Jay 57 is a good guy. At that point, he went by Jay Logic. Yep. Right. So we yep. did a, we did a song together. And I went out to the studio in Long Island. We recorded it the whole nine. And then, um, and then years went by later and Jay came on some tours with us and some shows and did some merch with us. And Jay and I would be the ones like no one drinks and really in the group, like Bill will have a sip now and then, but a lot of smokers clips a straight edge. I'd be the one, I don't really smoke anymore. You know, I actually don't. And uh, so we would drink and we'd get, you know, tipsy and sometimes blatantly drunk sometimes. <laughs> shows and Jay was responsible for counting merch. Yeah. Right. And then, and then clips would be pissed. He was like, <laughs> what are you and Sabak doing? You know, Jay, you're in charge of the merch. Like to one night where Jay couldn't even count the merch anymore. He was so <laughs> wasted. And uh, yeah, so we, just, we, we just always hit it off. You know what I mean? We, it was all good. And then I just saw the evolution of Jay with the Brown Bat All Stars and, and doing his thing and making these beats. And I was just, I was like, wow, this guy's really. I like what he's doing. I like how he's evolving. I like how he is not compromising himself or his art for anything mm-hmm. um, without fear. Right. Um, and it's authentic. And I just really genuinely appreciated that. And then having him produce the television song that we shot a video for, um, there's actually a song that um, I had recorded, but never fully came through where he did when my first son was born nine years ago. Um, and it cut up. Congratulations. You know, you got a son. I heard he looks mm-hmm. like you. I heard he looks like you. And Jay did that. And it's somewhere in the vault. It's on a hard drive that, oh, that shit. died on. That sounds dope. But anyway, so we just kept communicating throughout the years. And again, back to the story in Europe with Eclipse, hollered at him. And we said, let's see how this goes. Given that fact, I'm extremely excited about continuing working with Jay 57 on a couple of more tracks. And we'll see how it evolves. Okay. Um, and when I was re- when we were doing this, this um, block cheese and bocce, he was, and again, I'm not going to say what it is. I'll let him explain, but he was in this whole other realm of extraordinaire, you know, doing this amazing project that will be coming up soon with some really, uh, you know, pretty dope artists that he was locked in the studio with or else we probably would have knocked out maybe one or two. More. Okay. Okay. Um, All right. Yeah, but we do have plans. We're going to connect again and see what the next one takes us. Okay. Hey man, I want to advocate. I want to advocate for Lucas right now that he get his proper credits on his record, man. Hundred <laughs> percent. Okay, cool, cool. Yeah. I don't like to see nobody get played out no. in in the game. You know what I mean? No, 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 absolutely not. <laughs> you know what's funny? Uh, about two hours ago, we were watching D Nice on live because D Nice okay. was killing it. Oh, he's right. killing it right and, now. And, Killing it, right? And and Lucas was watching, and he ran down to the basement, and I put it on my Instagram page. If you follow me at Instagram, it's at John Sabak Red Fuentes, J O H N S A B A C R E D F U E N T E S. So John Sabak Red Fuentes, and um, he came down to the basement. He's got controllers, little Newmark controllers. I got turntable sets too, but. I have real vinyl, so I'm like, you can't scratch the vinyl. Bro. That's right. Like, stay away. Yeah, like, that's right. But he's got Serato, and he was so inspired. He came downstairs. I said, where, where are you going? I filmed him, and he was cutting up Jay-Z, Hard Knock Life, mixing it with good times. So oh, he actually good. is, he actually DJs with controllers and gets booked for very, like little parties, birthday parties here and there. So that's, yeah, that's, that's my little, that's my dude right there. And he's oh, lucky. Shots and, out and, to him. And, and he pitches. That's my little all right. My little Mariano Rivera. Hopefully. <laughs> okay. Nice. That's, a young man. That's dope. Yeah. He's yeah, in the video too, out, right? He did get credit and he did get credit. Right. Oh, okay, cool. There's a video out cool. too, right, Bot? You and you and him are both right. in it, right? 
Yes, we did. So shout out to my brother, uh, Sergio Rodriguez, who's out in the Bay Area. Um, good friend of mine who was like, yeah, let's get a video going and shot the video. We actually shot it the morning of Super Bowl Sunday. We just got the camera out. We went to some areas, shot the video, came back, watched the Super Bowl, ate some food or whatever, and then edited it um, a couple of weeks. Um, and because uh, we're, we're all busy, we got, you know, day to days and um, oh, yeah. got to edit and put it out. It's interesting, though, because I revamped like, sabak red music youtube right the page and it's interesting how like just putting it straight up on instagram or straight up on facebook will get a lot more views than just dumping it on youtube and putting a link to it you know um mm. especially for someone in my position who's still like you know got day to day i'm doing this as an opportunity not to revamp a whole career if it happens it happens but like i'm doing it as a way to stay creative and inspire my soul because yep. you can't take that away from me you know and Word. people ask me, people ask me a lot of times, you know, it's like, so you have a day to day. I'm so fortunate and blessed guys to be able to have what quote unquote day to day. My day to day is the same purpose with a different platform, right? Mm -hmm. I'm not reporting to an office every day. I'm helping design programs and curriculum and connecting with amazing artists here in the Bay area to be able to provide opportunities for young people for social justice, right? For our most sure. marginalized youth to provide equity in education. So it's like my whole life has always been like that. Mm -hmm. So it's, you know, I feel I feel really extremely fortunate and blessed for that. That's dope. Yeah, Buck, that's the same reason Meeks and I started this thing. You know, we we both been, you know, messing around with this music thing for, you know, 25 years now. And um, you <laughs> know, five years ago, we we were just uh we just wanted to get back to having fun. You know, mm -hmm. so, so I was I was yeah. like, when, when when's the mo when's the time that I had the most fun? And I was for me, it was when I was doing college radio, like when I was in high school and then when I hit college and in college, college radio for six to eight years, man, that was a fucking, yes. sh that was so much fucking fun. And that's when I met yes. this, that's oh, when God. I met this guy right here. And I was like, look, man, like every Sunday at a minimum, we're just going to get together and do this shit and see what happens, you know? So you I know. love it. I yeah. love it. And that's, that's what we should be doing. Right. And it's not because we're getting old. It's because we're shifting a little bit where our priorities are, especially once we have children and family, right? Mm, yes. With the ability to, to remain creative to what feeds our soul, because honestly, it makes us better husbands, better fathers, better friends, better colleagues. Yeah, once man. we tap into that, right? Yeah. And that's yeah. true. Yeah, but on right. the flip on the flip side of that, how you were talking about how you were thankful to have you know your day to day and how it was just you, you were doing you're doing the same thing that you've been doing for years. You know, the other side of that is that we're also lucky that we have this right here because a lot of people don't have this like that other outlet. Right. Mm -hmm. So, you know, I've, I've had conversations with a number of folks that, you know, actually is as early as this week where, you know, um, you know, uh, uh, one of my wife's cousins actually like uh, he, mm -hmm. I, I'm sure this is not what he, I'm sure that his, his life is obviously, you know, uh, not this simple. But one comment that he made to me is. You know, every day when I come home from work, I just I flip on the TV and I just watch sports until I, it's time for me to go to bed and wake up and, you know, do it, you know, do it again. The next day It's like when I come home, there's no sports to flip on. I'm like, well, motherfucker, it's time to learn how to play guitar. Right. Or it, it says, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like yeah. to do, do yeah. something, you know, and like I'm, I'm, I'm so thankful for this thing right now. Like, you know, <laughs> Meeks made the comment. I don't know if it's going to be on the interview or not. You know, uh, he, he said it didn't look like it, there was too much bad shit crazy on my face, you know, when, when we connected tonight. But I was like, man, as soon as we flipped on the phone. Flipped on Skype, it all went away. You know, a lot of people don't have all this. All so. shit go out the window, man. You know? yeah. It goes out the window. It's like yeah. finding out, you know, and these are opportunities for us to really tap into what else sparks our soul, yep. right? What else sparks our interest and what have we been procrastinating on or holding off on that we can probably, you know, I won't lie. Like, I'm ambidextrous, right? So I have a lefty guitar that I purchased at New York Sound Music probably in the 90s. Mm. I know how to play like three chords and maybe one song. I said to myself, it's funny you mentioned guitar. I said, you know what? At the end of this, when it's all said and done, I'm going to learn how to play at least five songs. <laughs> I want to be that dude at the campfire when we go camping who can break out the guitar Hell yeah. and freestyle, right? Freestyle and do that, right? 
And I remember I, I used to bring that tour. We were on tour with the Beat Nuts after, you know, Fiction and Beat Nuts, and I brought the guitar. And Gore-Tex and I, it's on the green DVD. We, I was like playing the guitar. We were like, I think Gore-Tex was playing guitar at one point too. Freestyling, it was wild. But I never right. really learned how to play. So yeah, pick up the guitar, right? Learn how to yeah. show. Something, right? yeah. Something. Something. Yeah, Something. man. Right? Let's, let's stay there for a second. Uh, after, after high school, you... Um, you went to school for engineering and recording, right? Do you still dabble in that a little bit? I do. You know, what's interesting is that after high school, and I was going to talk to you about the college radio too, John, too. I want to see if I had serviced you with any records because I was doing college radio promotion for Wild Pitch. But yeah, so mm-hmm. I do dabble in it. I do dabble in a little bit. But my my era of when I went into college was um, right on the cusp of still analog and digital. So like my final mm-hmm. exam, right? One of my final exams for school was splicing a ZZ Top record and having it tape a two inch oh, together. Shit. And if it was off, I failed. If it was on, I passed. Right. Wow. But then we would still get on the boards of SSL studio, uh, SSL boards in the studio, like Chung King, which was part of an internship we ended up doing. Yeah. So legendary. Um, but man, it's you got to keep up with it. And I remember I went to school in my class um, was, uh, DJ Miz from a group out of Philly called Freshco and Miz. Yep. I, oh, yeah. I was taking classes with Miz, if y'all know about yeah. the group Freshco and Miz, right? <laughs> so I remember us talking about it because we were artists too, and yet we were fresh out of high school, you know, trying to delve into this career and going to college and joining an audio engineering school and trying to figure it out. And uh, yeah, it was just finding that balance, but things evolve so quickly. So with that being said, my ear's still there. I can definitely hear but I prefer to have an engineer. And shout out to my engineer, who's been my engineer since I moved out here in 2005, Dion Decimals, um, who's got a great ear and does mixes and and all of that. But I, I definitely sit with him as we go through that to listen to it. No doubt. That's dope. Yeah, for sure. Bakwa. doing uh, some uh, college uh, promo for a wild pitch. Uh, yeah. Is, is that the MC Search connection? Or So so um, folks who, who know nonfiction history knows that um, – when MC Search Connection, Search and I actually go back way before nonfiction. So um, MC Search and I met at an, at an acting audition for a show that Russell Simmons and Quincy Jones is putting together called B-Boys. Mm. And mm. I remember just going on an audition just because I was on the grind and the hustle. And I remember they were looking for someone, you know, like me. But a DJ, actually, this is crazy. We're we'll bringing this up right now. The <laughs> DJ's name and the script was DJ 2020. Oh, no fucking way. Real boy. talk. <laughs> I, fuck? I encourage you to interview MC Search about this shit. Just, just because this DJ name was DJ 2020. It was a show called B-Boys that was written and pr- going to be produced by Quincy Jones and Russell Simmons. I remember walking into the open call audition, and it was me, all of Onyx, Federal <laughs> Star, Busta Rhymes, <laughs> UMCs, MC Search, Chill from Groove Be Chill. Oh my God. Like massive people. Anyway, I kept getting callbacks and callbacks because it was a role for DJ 2020, which was supposed to be someone that looked like now Puerto Rican Sicilian, but I'm white as fuck, right? Right. Same for MC Search. Yep. So it was hundreds and hundreds of people that auditioned. It came down to the last like six people. There were only five characters. At, and even my boy Donald Faison, who was in, in, uh, you know, clueless and scrubs, yeah. all of that. That's a friend of mine for many, many years oh, even after that whole thing. Right. It came down to auditioning. And I remember being in front of Russell Simmons in the camera, and it was me. Um I don't remember which UMC it was, but it was uh, one of the UMCs and Buster Rhymes. And they asked me to rap and I started rapping and Buster heard me rapping and started doing a beatbox. No lie, Russell Simmons got this on footage because it was being filmed. He's got it on VHS tape oh, island man. somewhere, right? He got the callbacks. It was down to six people. And the six people that was down to was me, MC Search, Fredro Stahl, Most Def, Dante. I remember he was Dante. Yeah. Right. Um, Donald Faison and who and Chill. I think it was Chill from Ruby Chill. I went in and did the last little audition. And they called me in. They, they called me in and said, "John, listen, you did really, really well. We appreciate you for all these callbacks and coming back and coming back. But we're going to give the, the role to MC Search." And I was like, "No problem. It's all good." You know, I thought I thought at that time it was piled. I thought it was better than him. 
I was like, oh, yeah. he knows he's on a Def Jam. It's a Russell Simmons. Yeah, 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 you know, yeah, yeah. He gave me a pound, all good. I was on the grind. I was going to audio engineering school, the whole nine. I was working for the new music seminar, right? Oh, yeah. Demos, the new music seminar, they had these, these evening events called New Music Nights. And I remember getting takes from House of Pain, the first album, right? Um, speaking of Tennessee, Arrested Development, right? Naughty by Nature. I was getting these in the office with this woman named Melanie. He was up at Tommy Boy Records because that's where New Music Seminar was housed. And I was doing an internship. And I remember hearing this stuff. And then I would go out to all the parties every night. Seen Search again. Seen Search again. Uh, long story short, forward, who don't, those of you who never heard the story, Seen Search in the club. What up, Search? Oh, yeah. Oh, yo. What up? What up? B-Boys, right? Yeah, B-Boys. David Falastino, who was over on... um, D- David Falastino, Bud Bundy, was rapping on one of these events somehow. And Search was like, yo, you want to be down? You want me to sign you with some shit? I was like, I don't know about that, but, you know, what's good? He was like, go battle David Falastino right now. Go jump on the stage and, like, battle him. I was like, word? <laughs> Let's go. <laughs> he was like, no, 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 just playing, just playing, just playing. You know, whatever. <laughs> and I was like, okay, cool. But he saw I was real. Fast forward, like three, uh, here's my number, never called me. Fast forward a couple of years later, my boy M Try opened up for him and DJ Riz and DJ Eclipse at a place in Brooklyn. And I was supporting my boy M Try doing some background vocals and that freestyle search seen me again. I was like, I remember that kid called me on stage during his set to freestyle. I freestyle. At the end of the show, Serge was like, yo, get that guy's number. So Eclipse comes in, calls me, goes to the van. Serge gets my number. Cool. I said, Serge, I met you mad time before, bro. Like, you never called me. Okay, cool. Here's my number. About a week and a half, two weeks later, Serge calls me. My mom picks up the phone. I'm coming back from school on the end train, get off my stop, get to the house. My mom's like, Oh, it's kind of search MC search called third base or something like that. I don't know. So I call him back. He's like, yo, what up? I'm in Cedarhurst, Long Island right now. Blah, blah, blah. I'm about to go to a studio with an artist in my high book named OC. Come oh, down to the studio. Shit. If you really want to be down, come to the studio. And I was like, come to the studio. <laughs> I'm in Gravesend, Brooklyn by Coney Island. I got to go to Long Island. Call my boy Albie. I was like, he's the only one I knew at that time. He had a car. Albie says, I'll get you right now. Got two 40 ounces, got in the car, <laughs> drove out. to the studio. I love OC, it. <laughs> OC was in the studio recording. I was like, wow, this artist is incredible. OC, to me, I not, remember, it was like Nas was being produced at the time, too, starting to come out. OC blew my mind. Me and my boy, I'll be OC, search, a couple other people that were there, got in the stu- in the, got in the vocal booth, did a chorus, right? Search scene, I was real. I was about it. I, I got out there. I made, I made it happen. I went out there. Yeah, yeah. So Search and I just kept talking, kept talking. I would go to his house. He played me beats. I start writing, writing. At that point, I was also part of a group called Brooklyn with me and my boy Jigsaw, who I went to school with since Seth Lowe Junior High School. Okay. And uh, we just started. I don't know, I'm going on a tangent. Some of y'all. Oh, no, go. This Run it, man. Run it. That's man. what this is for. Run anyway, it. Anyway, it, it's a long story, but it, the Search and I just gelled and we found that we. You know, we connected really, really well. So he brought me and my boy, you know, Kevin Barnes, a.k.a. Jigsaw, to the studio. And we were writing clips, was making us beats. We were doing these demos. And at that time, Search started fucking with Nas. So I was there for the inception of Illmatic, right? Whew. So I was there when Search would be like, I, I got to go see Nas. Y'all keep writing. I got to go see Nas. Search would come back. And I remember the day we were up in his studio in Cedarhurst, Long Island up in the attic and we were writing search comes back with the represent demo. Oh my God. And he plays it with a different beat with the beat that it is now or the new Same. one. No, the beat, the new beat. The, the okay. New one. The one that the made the album. Beat. Okay. Gotcha. And, and, and I'm just like, Oh my God. I, I, yo, I lost my mind. I was like, yo, this is crazy. Trash up the lyrics through in the garbage. Like this is crazy. Like Nas is some other shit. And I just remember us getting like to hear Illmatic. Like the like, piece were, together, the joints were coming in, bro. As yeah, it looked crazy. That's awesome, yo. Right, dude. Me, I'm me, not gonna front, Buck. I see a chest that would come to the studio, and Eclipse was living with Search at the time too. So we and Eclipse formed a good bond, and and Riz, and then Search's Search had to go to England to London 
for a show um, in 1994, and I've never traveled overseas before. I'm like, you know, what is this? Uh-huh. And Eclipse could go at the time for whatever reason. So, um, so he's like, yo, I got an extra ticket box. You want to roll? Let's go. I got my passport really quick, and we flew overseas. It was Search, Riz, me, and, and Search's wife, Chantel. And we flew to London, and I remember getting to London and doing the Tim, w- Tim Westwood show. Right, oh, shit. On Tim Westwood. This is 1994, bro. Right, mm-hmm. and then mm-hmm. doing Tim Westwood, and then the next day getting picked up in a Sprinter, what we we know today as the Sprinter van. Yeah. And who's in the Sprinter van? Now Rogers, bro. Oh like, shit. shit! And we're driving to what? Cambridge. Oh my god! And I'm like, yo, this is crazy. <laughs> like, this is wild. You know what I mean? Like this is wild. Like. And it was just amazing. And anyway, lo- uh, this no, so hold, hold on. Well, what did, what did this, you talk this, with this Nile Rogers about, ever. man? What, what did you talk with Niles about? Yo, I think we were just talking about music. We were talking about Sheik. We were talking about the Weekender. Had he ever done it before? You know, okay. God, I, it was wild. I, I don't even, I don't even remember. But we shared this, like, God man, damn, right? The thing, it was crazy. Um, amazing. and then we did this amazing Weekender show in Cambridge, England. And it was off the chain and people loved it, came back, flew back home. And then, and then search ended up getting the VP of marketing at wild pitch. Uh, and said, Bach, I want you to join. I know you're in school. You're doing your thing. Come join, come do college radio promotion. OC who you came to steal with is going to be next up. We're going to distribute his album. On, we're going to put out his album on wild. It's called word. Nice. Oh, you sh- lack the minerals and vitamins. I ain't nice. What? What? Right when that That's came out, insane. and I just remember, and OC will test to this too. Is like I remember there was some business that wasn't necessarily maybe handled correctly, or folks weren't necessarily on the same page. And me, as an artist, and also as just a huge hip hop fan, I would go downstairs to the bodega, get some Lucy's. OC would come into the office, the little office I had, and we just built. And I remember being at these meetings at the conference tables and really advocating and Eclipse and Search and. Stu Fine, who was, you know, the founder of Wild Pitch. And yeah. mm-hmm. how do we get this record to really pop off and search creating those stickers with the OC? And then I was there, man. It was crazy. I'm man, was taking crazy. me back now thinking about yeah. those days. <laughs> uh, man, we hear we the excitement in your voice, man. It's like, it's like, uh, uh, shit, it probably felt like it was just yesterday, man. It does. It feels like it was just yesterday. And sometimes people, when I do tell stories periodically, people like Bach. Why are you so humble, man? You don't really talk about this shit a lot. People uh-huh. with as many pictures and archives as you have is incredible. Like I mentioned earlier, before we started recording, when I was 14 years old, there was a DJ named Anthony who was from Brooklyn and would promote Milk and Gizmo, Tila Rock, No Sarah for Sleeping Bag Records, Big Daddy Kane. And he would be like, yo, anybody want to help me promote, hand out flyers? You'll put your initial on the side of the flyer. And if you hand it out, I'll give you 50 cents for every person that comes into the club. I'll give you 50 cents. All right, I'll, I'll hand it out. I'll get 50 cents. I make like, you know, $80 a night. When I was 14. Oh, and, yeah. Oh, I was breaking my mom's curfew. Oh, yeah. But in the backstage with Scoob and Scrap. Making, making dough nice and in the mix. Practicing <laughs> the beatbox for T. La Rock. No you know doubt. I mean? That's and crazy. Q, Q Unique was like, yo. I, but here, so, <laughs> yo. I'm going to tell you right now, and then I'm going to get off my, my horse right now because I feel bad about it. <laughs> no, 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 like, run it, man. Run it. Don't off, but, bro, like, I remember Q Unique and I went to Lafayette High School. He was a couple years older than I am, and he was like, yo, I remember you with a red flat top looking like redhead kingpin promoting parties. And I remember I would be like, yo, where's that redheaded kid so I can know where the parties are happening? And I remember coming to you to get flyers. And we didn't know this until later on when he was an arsonist and I was in the office. He was like, when we Damn. met for the first time at Fat Beats, he was like, I remember you. You were that kid at Lafayette, bro. That's crazy. Wow. Damn, that's it wild. Was wild. So, you know, Meant yeah, to be. So there's a lot, man. The stories, the stories continue. They can continue and continue. I don't so, know, man. man. I, I think we got to have a part two someday. For yeah, sure. might have to go down, man. Like straight you know history. Shit. I, I guarantee <laughs> just, just that little bit right there, you <laughs> seen some real shit. <laughs> yeah yeah i won't even go into the whole other part about being up in the clubs with some of the most high high end hollywood celebrities where i was bringing ill bill and gore-tex to new year's eve parties where q-tip was djing and janet jackson was dancing like real uh... talk real talk 
I know I why. Did. I know. I know why you're humble though, because it's, you were there. It's like it ain't oh, no yeah. need to. Yeah, it ain't no need to throw that in people's face and stuff no, like no. that. That's, because it doesn't uh, really mean anything other than we had right. a really good time. No doubt, right? right? It doesn't. It doesn't manifest itself into into values. It doesn't manifest itself into financial gain. It doesn't right. manifest. Itself. It's a wonderful opportunity to share a story about good times. Exactly, yeah, man. That's real. Yeah. No doubt. Damn. Yeah, man. you just put that in the words because you know, uh, for whatever reason, a lot of people, you know, that 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 fuck with me and John, they be like, man, y'all need to. Tell y'all story more and more. Like, man, first of all, don't nobody want to hear that shit. That's second of all, true, yeah, but but second of all, if you know, you know. And I know, yeah. I know for me personally, if you know, then you know that's good enough for me. I don't, yeah. I don't need to, I don't need to sit down with you know Dan Rather and you know <laughs> spill my spill my whole shit out. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, <laughs> if you know, you know. That's 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 good enough for me. You yeah. know. Yeah, yeah. But the, the interesting part about all of that is that it doesn't matter for me. It doesn't matter how many people we've come across or whatever. Being rooted in value, and some of my values are respect, gratitude, mm -hmm. right? Um, then the circle becomes those who are still here and still around authentically. Yep. Authentic yep. relationships yeah. become the prominent point of where we're at in the pillar in our lives right now, right? Oh, yeah. So, so that's when the fact that. As crazy as, you know, the trials and tribulations that groups go through, the fact that me, Bill, Eclipse, and, and Gore-Tex, you know, Lord Goat can still communicate together is amazing. The fact that J57 and I can put out a song on our birthdays and shoot a video is amazing. You know what I mean? Right. It's, oh, uh, like, that's that connectedness. Even to look at, like, what the homie Nems is doing right now, right? Oh, like, killing Will it. And killing you know it. I mean? Come on, man. Oh. Like that. And, and, and seeing Vinny pass and amazing heavy, things he's doing, you know, and looking at like Immortal Technique was out in Oakland about a couple of months ago and hollered at him and I chilled with him and Chino Excel and brought him to some of the schools that I was work I worked with and spoke to the students because I mean that's that's meaningful to me, you know yeah, that's yeah. that's what matters. Those 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 stories from back then are great because it helped shape shape and mold us, yeah. right? Yeah. But it's the authenticity of what's happening now and how we get through these times and, and where we will go from here. Yeah, 100 so. percent. Man, Bach, I, I honestly, man, I had no idea. I know you had history, but I didn't know it went that deep. That's that's strong, man. Bro. Bro, that's and that's Respect only like you. The surface. To be honest with you, but oh, you know, I know. I'll save that for Dan Rather. Right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, not us. <laughs> no, 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 no. I'm no. fucking with you. I'm fucking with you. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You are my Dan Rather. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, we're just that's fucking awesome. with you, man. Oh man. All right. Well, Bach, we, we've taken plenty of your time tonight, man. Um, right. Meeks, Meeks, you got anything else you wanted to to ask or? No. Nah, any I'm burning good, questions? Man. Um. Um, I, I do kind of, uh, real quick, just, um, just to think about 06 and, uh, uh, uh an abrupt breakup of, of how do you guys find yourselves getting back together and, and making stuff happen 2014? And, and just like you said, just last year, y'all were touring and everything like that. Um, yeah. Can you talk about what the breakup was about and and maybe going to about what getting back together was about? You know, people have asked that question, and I know we've spoken about that in the past. And I think when I think about the breakup, it genuinely, I say genuinely, Bill and Gore-Tex have so much history. I mean, they have more history than I have. I came in later on, right? It's like they grew up together. Mm -hmm. So there's the, already this history. I'm coming in as someone almost as a neutral party, right? To seeing what's happening. And oftentimes, even in family, things happen, right? No There's doubt. times where even my own twin sister, I didn't speak to for a while. Yep. It happens. Mm -hmm. But when you know it's here in the heart and you know that it's authentic, it will eventually come back. And I think the testament is not so much about the breakup, but it's how we were able to overcome whatever we the challenges were. Mm -hmm. and see them through so when we started talking about you know this book that was going to be put out right the box set with the music and we started connecting again and about the potential anniversary show that we would do in new york city 
we found that, fuck, man, you know, we, we understand that there's a differences and we're stubborn in our own ways, many of us, right? We, sure. Alpha males, if you will, and, you know, artists, et cetera, et cetera, where it was, it was a trying time. And I think everyone has their own belief as to why the breakup was necessary, right? Um, but I think the, the end result or the continued result becomes what we're able to do with that. And we were able to come back together in 2014, able to come back together again, you know, this past year in tour. And when we get back together in real talk, I don't say this to be cliche, I say this for real. It's like, we're right back where we were. Right? It's exactly. magic, man. Sharing the stories, yeah. sharing the stage. I mean, this past tour that we did in Europe, I mean, I'm mm-hmm. trusting that it'll all get better again. So people have an opportunity to see us again overseas and in the States. We It was like the best show was ever so no, seriously um so i think it, it, it it's yeah it's it's a it was a wonderful opportunity for us to disconnect reflect and then connect yeah there you go 100%. there you go all right you, you think what well, shout out to them shout out to them because they're doing their thing cortex no got a project coming out right now you know bill's got project after project coming out you know and he clips keeps <laughs> clips man that dude is like you know He's a pillar for real oh, in hip hop. A hundred percent. Got to go down with some of the greatest ever, oh, right? God. Your favorite DJ, producer, rapper who's trying to figure something out right now has consulted Eclipse at one way, shape, or form. Yeah, hundred percent for advice or so, something, right? No doubt, hundred yeah. percent. Shout out Eclipse. Oh yeah, word. Cool. Yep. Yeah, we're talking with Gore uh, in a couple of weeks, I think, Bach. Jay Jay nice. said Jay set that one up too. I I let that leak out a, a little surprise there at the end, but uh, there you go. yeah, we're gonna we're right gonna on. we're gonna talk, we're gonna talk with him too. So it's gonna it's gonna be good shit. I'm glad y'all see. I'm good glad deal. to see you guys making the run the you know making the rounds again last year. That's dope, man. For sure. Mm-hmm. For sure. So well, thank uh, you guys. I really appreciate your time. Yeah, yeah. Bach, man, what do you want to leave the people you, with, man? Yeah, what do you want to leave with the people with? Where, where can they go support you? Put some money in your pocket. Buy some music. Like what? Where's Ground Zero for for uh, Sabak? I'm a, uh, yeah, look, I'm gonna keep it real. I'm good. I don't need you to put money in my pocket if you okay. want to. That's cool. All right. I'd rather you like take care of yourselves because you okay. taking care of yourselves means that my son's futures, you know, the future of my two sons and the rest of the world will be okay. But if you wanted to come through and give a shout or holla, my Instagram is so I, I have so hard, such a hard time keeping up with the shit, man. To be honest with you, not that I'm not savvy of it, but it's uh, Instagram is at John Sabak Red Fuentes, Facebook Sabak Red, the whole nine. Um, but yeah, you'll find me. Yeah, you're you plugged really in. It, it's me. easy. Yeah, yeah, me. yeah. You're, you're you're plugged in. You, you type in Sabak Red, you can you can find everywhere uh, everywhere find you anything. are, man. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> exactly. Other than that, I'll be here doing youth development, coaching adults to be able to be the best youth developers they possibly can, and uh, doing my thing. All right. Nice. No doubt. Bob, thank you, man. You, bro. Thank you, brother. Appreciate you as well. Thank yeah, you, man. All right. We'll, we'll be uh, safe out there, there, man. Yes, sir. Thanks, guys. Thank you, Bob. Peace. Peace, man. All right, Meeks. What do you think, brother? Yeah. Wow. Yo, that's a uh, <laughs> one for the books, yeah. <laughs> Sally, <laughs> one for the books, man. It's you know what's ill is how comfortable you get. Like once you get over the the kind of like this being the way it is right now, like we just. I mean, the seamless. Like uh, it it's was Ill. it was a it was a regular interview session, man. That's dope. As far man. as I'm concerned, absolutely. Yeah, you're yeah. right. You're right, though. We got to figure out a way to. Uh, Record it would be it shits. would be dope to document this shit some <laughs> kind of way. I don't know. I don't. I, I I know personally. I don't have the technology to do that. I'm. A, I would have to leave that up to you. But just know that I'm down. Like if we could, if we figure it out, cool. If we don't, that's cool too. No, but. we can figure it out. I, I didn't even think about. It. I I didn't even think it was gonna go down like this. I I I, I don't think in in video terms. But man, I. I know there's a way that we can. I, I'm going to figure this out. We're going to make this shit happen. Yeah. So. All oh, good. All right. So uh, let's see here. Episode 246. Right? 
Yeah, so we're going we're gonna to put in the artwork as COVID-246. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, man. So uh, so if you listen to this when it dropped on Thursday, make sure you go back and listen to episode 246, which is the mix show for the week. You're going to be able yeah. to hear the Sabak Red and J57 single called, uh, what is it, Block Cheese and Bocce? That's a shit yeah. so fucking <laughs> hell. That's <just> and, <laughs> And uh, and, and, it's so gangster, it's so gangster, and and the the joint's so tough too. Um, so yeah, you're going to be able to hear that on 246, and uh, of course, all the latest and greatest, you know, joints out right now. And uh, yeah, you know, support Sabak, support J57, and uh, you know, Southern Vanguard Radio, it's that fly shit, Meeks. Nothing but the fly shit, man, even on Skype, even on Skype, (laughs) still have fly, still fly. Twice a week meets and twice mother, a week. Look at that motherfucker lab. Look at the lab. That's fly shit oh, right there. Lab, lab looking look at crispy. the floor. Lab, lab look at that crispy <laughs> white paint. Look at that shit. Fly shit with the robin egg blue chair in the back. Not fucking around, man. The fuck happened, man? I feel like I wish I was over there right now. I bust a moonwalk on that fucking floor right now. <laughs> Hell yeah, yeah, man. yeah. All right. Twice a week meets, twice a week go. Yo. Southern Vanguard Radio. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And we out. Corona in your mouth. <laughs> All right, y'all. Peace. Peace. <laughs> Dude. <laughs>